Once upon a time there was a line that ventured deep into the hills. It crossed over marshland and high ravines. The line eventually made its way to a huge lake in a valley. The first station served a tiny village with a textile mill close to the line. The other stations were very small and only served the farms along the valley. The line ran round the lake until it came back on itself. Because of the marshland and swamps, it proved difficult to reconnect the line to itself. The boggy terrain proved difficult to build a junction over, so instead, the line crossed over itself and rejoined the main line further down. To make sure there was no accidents, a station was built to control the train's movements over the crossing. The line was a hidden gem with the tranquility of the lake to the breathtaking scenery of the valley. But not every story has a happy ending. The station master at the crossing was very proud of his work. He kept his station in pristine condition and made sure everything rang like clockwork. He was very strict at timekeeping and would become very annoyed if a train arrived late. His name was Mr. Jacob Wellington. He stood no nonsense and ruled his station with an iron fist. Watch yourself with him, the engine crews would always say, or Wellington will give you the boot. The line soon fell on hard times. The farms began to use the roads and soon the line was left in disrepair. The first station was only used once a week and gradually all train services were cancelled. The outcome of this ruined Mr. Wellington's life. He had no friends or family. The railway was all that he had. Some say he went mad with power. Others say he went mad losing his power. And many others thought he was already mad. He couldn't cope with the loss of his job. It was all that he had known. Mr. Wellington disappeared one foggy night, never to return. He left a note saying, I will always be part of my station. He sat in his office and set it alight. No one could quite imagine what was going through his mind when he ended everything in such a grisly way. But many a workman will tell you that his final companion was an old owl perched high on a dead tree. And whenever he calls across the valley, the fog rolls in and Mr. Wellington roams through the derelict station. Years went by. Ramblers and tourists began to flock to the lake. The village became very busy. The textile mill turned into a museum and the lakes now offered boat rides. It was seen in the best interests of everyone if the railway was to reopen as far as the first station. And so arrangements to reinstall the line began in earnest. One foggy morning, Duck was pulling an observation coach to the line. The fat controller was on board. As Doug steamed along, he ran over a detonator. Oh, exclaimed Doug, I hate detonators. The detonator had been placed on the track to warn the driver of an approaching signal. Doug pulled up gently to the signal. Out of the fog walked old Bailey. He was the fogman who placed detonators on this section of the main line. I'd be taking great care if you'd be going up to the lake, he murmured. Duck was puzzled. Why? Strange things go on at that crossing station. Mark my word, you hear an owl who you best be on your way and never looking back. He doesn't take too kindly to strangers at his station. Old Bailey disappeared into the fog. Take no notice of that silly old fool, grumbled Duck's driver. He's been telling that same old story for years. The signal changed and Duck steamed carefully onto the abandoned line. Duck stopped at bridges and tunnels for the fat controller and other important people to inspect the structure of the line and its surroundings. 
Eventually, they arrived at the crossing station. The fat controller and the inspectors looked around. Oddly, the home signal and the crossing gates seemed to be in perfect condition. Duck noticed the station through the fog. It seemed very sinister and very spooky. Look at that eye saw, scoffed the driver loudly. Shh, hissed Duck. Someone might hear you. Like you exactly, laughed his driver. Duck didn't say who. He felt strangely uncomfortable. The fat controller walked up to Duck. The line seems to be in perfect condition, he said. It'll need a few things clearing and repairing, but I think overall we'll have this line ready for the summer season. Beg pardon, sir, asked Duck, but what is to happen to that station? I'm afraid it will be knocked down. We have no use for it now. The first station will be turned into a terminus with a run-round loop, so everything else shall be ripped up, the fat controller explained. Duck felt nervous at what he had heard. Suddenly, an owl landed on a tree next to Duck and hooted loudly. The Great Western Engine whistled an alarm. The owl, frightened by the noise, flew away. Can we go now, sir? asked Duck eagerly. The fat controller and the inspectors climbed aboard the observation coach. I think we've outstayed our welcome, whispered Duck to himself, and he puffed quickly away. Duck wasn't sure, but he thought he saw the figure of a man watching them as they pulled away. The plans to reopen the line were soon put into action. Henry was assigned to pull the engineering and goods trains on the line. He felt very important at his new duty. Rumours soon began to spread around the yard of Old Bailey's warning. On a moonlit night, Henry was preparing to take a goods train to the station by the lake. Edward and Duck were working alongside him in the yard when an owl fluttered in and hooted loudly. Duck jumped. Some trucks went flying. Have you heard that story? he gasped. What story? grunted Henry. Whenever the owl hoots, a mist rolls in, murmured Edward. There's a legend that when the mist's about, there's a ghost about too. Take care on the old line, Henry. Henry snorted. What is it with you and ghosts? I'm fed up of these stories you keep on telling. You seem to bring nothing but bad news. Henry rumbled away. Stupid bird, he muttered. Edward looked at Duck. I did warn him, he sighed. Henry huffed along the main line. Owls, mists, ghosts. Edward's going soft in the boiler. There's no mist. But Henry was wrong. As soon as he turned onto the old line, it came down thick and fast. He could hardly see. Suddenly, Henry could see a faint, ominous glow through the fog. What's that? cried Henry as his driver brought the train to a stop. It's an amber lamp, murmured his driver. That means proceed with caution. Who's there? No one replied. Henry crept slowly forward. A quarter of a mile later, he stopped by a tree just outside of the crossing station. It had a sign nailed to it, Beware of the Viaduct. The driver was surprised. No one warned us about that before. And look, the signal's red and the gates are closed. Henry began to feel tense. 
The fireman looked up at the tree and stared in bewilderment. And there's a fogman's coat! But where's its owner? Then they saw a light move within the old station building. Henry looked in disbelief as a light flickered from the waiting room to the station master's office, revealing the shadow of a man. G -g -g ghost exclaimed Henry. Edward was right! Something very strange is happening, said his driver. I think it's best we go back. So do I, agreed Henry, and they wisely retreated back to the yards. By morning the mists had cleared. The workmen were talking about the unsafe viaduct. <laughs> Lucky you didn't cross it last night. Yes, but we don't know who warned us, replied Henry's driver. Whilst the men talked, Duck arrived with the breakdown crane. He had been sent to help the workmen mend the viaduct. He could see that Henry didn't look his usual self. How was last night? asked Duck. Eventful, replied Henry, but for the wrong reasons. He told Duck what had happened. Duck gulped. Did you get the feeling you were intruding and not wanted? Yes, indeed. But whatever it was, it made its presence felt I'm glad I left. Later that day, Henry's driver spoke to him. The viaduct has been repaired. We can take our train back along the old line tonight. Henry didn't really want to. As he was arranging his trucks, the yardmaster received some news. Something's gone wrong with a run-round loop at the top station. You have to push your trucks up the line, I'm afraid. Perfect, grumbled Henry. Is there anything else that can go wrong? But when nightfall came, he was sizzling nicely. Suddenly, an owl hooted. And then Gordon thundered by. The trucks noticed Henry jump. Oh, look, Henry spooked, said a truck, and the others giggled in their silly way. Be quiet, snapped Henry. I'm not scared. But he was. He pushed his train nervously out of the station. A little later, the fog came down. As they approached the same area, they saw the amber light again. Here we go, said Henry's driver. Then, unbeknown to Henry, the gates mysteriously closed by themselves, and the signal went red. The trucks had seen all, and they were spooked too. Faster, faster, there's a ghost about! They surged forwards in fright. Stop! Stop! yelled Henry. They charged towards the crossing, bursting through the gates and raced past the station. A mysterious figure watched Henry go by. Ahead was a landslide blocking the line right in front of the viaduct. Henry braked hard, but the trucks hit some of the rubble and plunged into the ravine. There was a long silence. Henry and his crew stood in the darkness trying to make sense out of what had just happened. Then Henry's driver saw a strange sight coming towards them. What's that? he said. The fireman laughed. That's our ghost. It's old Bailey the fogman. Old Bailey appeared out of the fog on a pump trolley. He was very cross.
I tried to warn you about that viaduct. Why didn't you pay attention? We're sorry we ignored your warnings, replied the driver. Is there anything we can do to thank you? Oh, I'd like to become station master at that new station. I promise I won't spook Henry. Huh! <laughs> hopped Henry. He didn't find the situation funny at all. A couple of weeks later, Old Bailey's wish was granted. He was praised for his efforts and loyal service and promoted to station master at the new reopened station by the lake. But Henry was not quite satisfied. How did you operate that old signal and gates at the abandoned crossing station? asked Henry one day. What are you talking about? I put detonators on the rails, didn't you hear em? Old Bailey explained. That's how I warned you. Henry suddenly felt very faint. But that's impossible. They didn't go off. Who oh, must be the work of old Mr. Wellington then? Old Bailey said thoughtfully. Henry said nothing. But the story doesn't end there. The Fat Controller had heard about Henry's ordeal and had been told the story of Mr. Wellington, the old station master. When at last the time came to demolish the old crossing station, the Fat Controller came to witness it being torn down. Where will Mr. Wellington go now? Henry asked. Perhaps he will finally be able to move on, said the Fat Controller. But whatever the case, he is not welcome on my railway. The Fat Controller did not leave until the crossing station was no more. Henry still believes that Mr. Wellington is still lingering around where his station used to be. He and Duck often talk about him. Some rowermen say that now his precious station has disappeared, he too can finally let go and move on. Whilst others believe that when the owl calls and the mist rolls in, he appears, wandering around where his station used to be, haunting the line, forever refusing to leave.